Well, I'm set up in the garage at home. I've got my plastic tote hooked up with part of the metal I need to do the electrolysis. The metal rods you see on the parts there on the mat are going to be the other electrical parts. Uh, one of the things, I've gone to quite a bit of trouble to wire this thing up. Most of the time I've watched the videos on electrolysis on the internet. They're doing one piece and I've got nine to do. So the laundry booster you see there is sodium carbonate. That's what they use to make the water more conductive and it's what makes it possible for the rest on the parts to transfer to the parts we have sitting in the tote. So I'm going to go ahead and hang those. Add my uh, mixture. That five gallon bucket you see there has part of the stuff in. I'm using about 15 gallons of water to submerge these parts. And you're supposed to on that uh, laundry booster, okay, laundry soda, whatever you want to call it, uh, you're supposed to use a, uh, one tablespoon per gallon. And that's what I've got mixed up in that bucket. Well, I've got all nine parts that I have to put through the electrolysis. And at the lower part of the screen, you can see that saw blade that uh, was originally on this thing. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with all this. So time for me to finish filling up the tote and uh, get ready to hook up the battery charger. The small charger I had, uh, I don't know whether there's something, uh, it, it works on my snowblower battery, but it doesn't want to do anything here. I hooked up my big charger. I've got it on the lowest setting it'll go on, it's uh, on 10 amps. And one of the things I noticed immediately, and hopefully you can see this on camera, is all the bubbling that's uh, taking place. Obviously something's going on. So kind of anxious to see what happens. That charger's only been on six or seven minutes and, and I want you to notice that saw blade I hung up there just for kicks. Look at all that froth that you see down in here. This is incredible. At this point, I'd say we're 40 to 45 minutes uh, into the electrolysis process, and uh, obviously something's happening. That basically is rust floating around on top, so that don't make a big difference. I let this thing, uh, I guess you call it process or run or whatever all night. You notice there's almost no bubbling going on anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut my charger down. And uh, it's really kind of amazing how much material, how much crud we see floating. Uh, I think the smartest thing for me to do is I want to disconnect my uh, battery charger, uh, lift some of these parts out of here. Uh, I've got over 120 pounds of water in this thing, so there's no way I can slide this over to the garage door. This thing must weigh 150, 160 pounds, considering the, uh, the weight of the parts. So I'm going to try to disconnect this thing, and uh, when I'm ready to start pulling parts, we'll show you what the heck we've got. I've got all my uh, connections loose that I used to hook everything together so I could do all this and one shot. I want to be kind of careful when I take these out. And one of the things I suggest is make sure you got rubber gloves. I mean, this solution is not caustic. Uh, one of the things nice about this is, is when you're done with this, from everything I've seen on the internet, you can actually take this material and find a place to dump it in the corner of your yard if you want to. I'm curious to see what happens. Cardboard down. Uh, oh wow. I don't believe this. 
This uh, little plate right here, if I can figure out how to get it loose, I want to show you this. This, this thing cleaned up far better than I ever would have expected. Uh, this blade tilt lock shaft, uh, it's still brown, but the thing is I can take uh, fine emery cloth and clean that off. No, I don't. This is unbelievable right here. I'm going to show you this. The uh, threads, this is my blade tilt lead screw. And I hope I've got this on a, in a position where you can see this. Look at the threads. Those things were so rusted up. I don't know. I'm not going to try to take this loose yet. I'm, I'll take a wire brush. Uh, I'm going to use brass bristles. You don't want to use any anything real coarse. But I'm, I, can, I can clean those threads out now. It looks like pretty much by hand. And uh, one of the things, that, again, that's nice about this, if I clean it and I still got rust on it, I can just reprocess it. Oh, this is looking good. One thing that's nice about this is all the thread seems to float. This thing was so filthy. too good a camera shot, but I want you to notice, see this? I can wipe this down, clean it up. This is what we started with, and look what we're going to end up with. There's a rust that I didn't have to uh, use a wire brush on. Oh, I love this. You know, it's just, uh, it's going to be a piece of cake cleaning that top. Let's see. to uh, wipe some of these down and find a way to empty this tub out and rinse it out. Well, there's uh, results of our efforts, and I've got to say I'm, I'm extremely impressed. Uh, all I did with these parts over here, with the exception of the arbor, is I really wanted to give you a view of how well that shaft cleaned up. Uh, the only thing I've done to this is I took a little uh, $2 wire brush and cleaned out, but uh, there's still a issue. There's a nick or something in the first couple threads, and we're going to show you how to fix that. But uh, at this point, I know the arbor's good. Uh, I've, I've already uh, got new bearings for it, and this saw, the next thing uh, I need to do on it 
is to uh, call the guy with the surface grinder. Now, one of the things that I do want to show you is I want you to remember the rust went from these to those. And if I take this, see that? You have any idea how much work that we saved using electrolysis to clean this thing up? When I started thinking about how to do this top, uh, my first inclination was to actually hang it. But if I was to hang it from the side, that means I'd have to build a container uh, about two feet by over two feet. And it, it was just so much work, you know, plywood sides. What I decided is I, I would want to lay this thing down because I was able to take a, a two by eight we had in the shop that was all warped and actually use it just to build a crate. And then what I did is I just took a drop cloth. It wasn't as heavy as I'd like for it to be, but I doubled it over a few times. And I put it inside the box. And as you can see, I started filling it with water. This is the side I care about. Uh, I'm gonna be reworking the top as an individual project. All I wanna do is to get the rust off this as fast and easy as I can. And at first I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll put my, my rods, you know, the uh, pieces that the rust migrates to, I'll put those on the bottom, and then I'll set the top down on, on top of that. But what I got thinking about as I looked at this top is I want to make sure all my bolt holes and, and everything are cleaned out. And if I lay this in there with the top up, I'm going to have a bunch of air pockets that the solution can't get into. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do this face down and then find a way to put my uh, receiver pieces above. So I've got some scrap phenolic here. You just put a few of those pieces in here. You know, someplace out near the sides. Now you may hear me groan on this one. I'm going to take my top I want to make sure I don't hit any of the sides or anything with it. And we're going to set it in there, making sure we've got clearance all the way around. Now I have to find a way to get my other pieces mounted. I took some more phenolic pieces. And what I want to do is I'm going to take those and set them out fairly close. I think I can probably get it out here. But we're going to do that on each side. And then I have two pieces of metal that I'm going to lay across those. We're going to bridge those. I've got my receiver pieces all cleaned up. So what I'll do is I'm just going to spread these out. any kind of electrical contact between you know these and those but what's going to be really cool about this is you see here I only have to add just a little bit more water which I think I'm going to do right now this already got the sodium carbonate in it so what we're going to do is I'm going to pour this in of an inch uh, above that. Well, what I'm hoping to, to accomplish here, I'm not guaranteed it's going to happen, is now those particles, you know, with the current I'm going to be using, those particles ought to migrate very, very quickly. And what I'm hoping to do by having this so shallow is I really want to get a good picture for you of how fast this process takes place. Now I've got my battery charger plugged in. Uh, obviously it's turned off. Now these are my two leads that go to the saw top, the one on the left, and to my sacrificial rods on the right. Make sure when you do this you have to have the black lead, the negative, to the black on the battery charger. 
and the red lead, the positive, is hooked to your sacrificial parts. Uh, current flows negative to positive. Okay? You notice here on the ends of these, I kind of canurgle those all up just to help me get better contact with my battery charger. So I'm on, you know, I'm off in two different directions here. I'm going to come in this way with my negative. This way with my positive. And I'm going to turn it on again. I'm on the, the lowest setting I can go on on my big chargers, 10 amps. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the charger and hopefully we can uh, really be able to see. What, what I'm hoping for is to be able for you to actually see the rust particles on the saw starting to accumulate on these rods. I don't know whether it's going to work, but I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. I don't know whether you can see it on camera, but uh, I see bubbling going on right now. One of the things I want to talk about while we're getting started here, that bubbling you see is actually gases escaping into the air. During this process, I understand both oxygen and hydrogen gases are actually put, put into the air. These are both highly explosive. Uh, one of the things you need to make sure of is when you do this, do it in a well-ventilated area mess up too much, you might find your garage roof in your neighbor's yard and I wouldn't want that to happen. Now you can see it. Well, this is really an impressive process. Uh, when I get to the point in my videos where uh, I think I can skip off of, the, the main reason I'm doing this is I want to get you guys to you know, take your kids and grandkids out to the shop with you. Te you know, teach them something. Uh, I mean, right now we got a system where, you know, half the kids coming out of high school don't have any skills. And, uh, you know, if the schools aren't going to do it as parents and grandparents, we need to. What I want you to notice, if you can see on the camera right here, and here, and here, and over here, uh, it's almost like there's uh, almost like air, you know, really a lot of air bubbles. And what that is, that's those bolt holes I was telling you about. What that is, is that system cleaning the rust out that might be in there on the threads. So I, I think this is going to be a very wise move doing this thing the way it is. It's been about four hours since I hooked the battery charger up, and I've got to say I'm absolutely shocked with this. Uh, we've got so much crud floating that I think that saw top's got to be pretty well done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect my battery charger and get it out. So I'm going to pull those rods out of there. Right now I don't have clearance to get that big cup down in there. And... Uh, this <laughs> that was perfectly clean steel when I turned that battery charger on four hours ago so I'm gonna stick these over here in the bucket no get rid of a lot of this stuff just so I don't lift it out when I pull the top out it's just an amazing process I hope you guys are surprised as I am. But look at the color of this water. Let's see what happens. I'm going to try to lift this thing out. Kind of prop it on a couple of the sides. Let it drain. And I don't want to punch a hole in my miner. Put my cell phone that and fall out of my pocket. Even 
down here the the rust we have. I mean, I don't know whether you can see we've got a little bit of rust in there. I, I know you can't see this off camera, but what surface rust that's still on this top <clears throat> is wiping right off. Isn't going to be as good as anything new. There's the top. And the only thing I did is wipe part of it with a paper towel. I think it's absolutely amazing to be able to do that. And uh, I just walk around, check the camera, make sure you got a good view. You got definitely should have gotten the point on this. Um, one of the things I hope we're showing you. And really, it's my goal to get as many as you folks out there as we can woodworking. But uh, hopefully you thought, even though I have a lot of problems getting that saw apart because of all the rust, I mean, you can see it's not really that much work beyond what I had to do as far as uh, you know, pounding the arbor housing off and everything. But uh, hopefully you're going to understand that you can do this too. It's not difficult at all. If you're willing to put the time and a little bit of money uh, to give the saw some upgrades, you can have one of these yard finds and, and I guarantee you, you could be doing all the high quality work you want to do with it. it this, this electrolysis is just an amazing process. Now, I've got just about as much of that pull it out of the as we can get. So what I want to do, and the nice part, I mean, I could have cut the rest of that excess plastic off. That's too lazy to do that. What I can actually do now, is I can just carry this outside and uh, dump it, actually. So right now, I'm just going to set it in my bucket. And uh, there's a simple frame I made. Put it together with uh, three ten-penny nails in each corner. Uh, you see, I did have a little bit of a leak here, but the garage floor needed washed anyway. So, Well, I hope this has been interesting for you so far. I'm going to uh, take this bucket outside and drain it. I'm going to hose down that top and bring it back in and show you what we ended up with. There's the bottom of the top. Uh, th there's physically no way I ever could have done anything with wire brushes or, or whatever it wouldn't have taken me hours and hours of work and uh, I mean looking at it realistically I might have you know maybe 45 minutes into uh, building my little tank and uh, getting that top ready but uh, th this is well worth it I mean I see so much potential that can be done with a saw like this. And I think the, fur the further we go with this, the more you're going to appreciate what we've done. I mean, I can tell you right now, when, when this thing goes back together, I'm going to have a real fondness for this machine because, I mean, we're resurrecting it from the dead.